Hi, my name's Jeff Holmes and today's lesson 1.6 is infrared data from soil samples. Before starting to talk about the actual application we'll develop and look at in the activity 1.6, I thought I'd just mention something about application development in general. So the top academic conference in machine learning is called ICML, International Conference on Machine Learning. This is where all the top people in the field present their work. In 2012, a paper was published at this conference, which was something of a wake-up call to the machine learning community. The author was Kiri Wagstaff from the Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, California, and the paper, which is accessible to anyone with an interest in machine learning, is called Machine Learning That Matters. And the URL there on the slide will enable you to download it and read it. So what the paper does is it kind of points out that the field is focusing too much on new methods and on the accuracy of those methods and less on the kind of application that will really make a difference. So what Kiri did was to suggest six challenges for machine learning applications. I'm not going to go through all the six that are listed there on the slide. I just want to talk about the highlighted one 100 million dollars saved through improved decision making provided by an ML system. Now believe it or not you can develop an ML system using near infrared data on soil samples that will be something that could save 100 million dollars. So this lessens a starting point for such a system but it is possible. Now, before we do that let's just take a moment to think about what machine learning requires in order for us to develop an application of any kind. Well, it needs input and output in its training phase. So in our case we need a set of samples, those are going to be soil samples in some form, and you'll see that in, in a while, and an output target value. In our case this is going to be a real valued number and will represent a property of interest of the soil. So that could be organic carbon, organic nitrogen, available nitrogen, potassium, something that we're interested in predicting from the input. And our problem, of course, is to learn a mapping that describes the relationship between the input and the output. And we refer to this mapping as a model. We build the model on our training data and then we use that model on unseen observations, so new soil, if you like, in order to, we apply the model to the new soil in order to, for it to predict the target or soil property of that soil that we're interested in, such as the organic carbon. Okay, so now we need to think about where we're going to get X and Y from for this particular application. Now, traditionally, soil samples are processed using techniques called wet chemistry techniques. And what those chemist wet chemistry techniques are trying to do is to determine the properties of the soil, such as available nitrogen, organic carbon, and so forth. So they will result in the Y values that we're interested in. So what we need for this application is for a number of samples to have been processed using wet chemistry to determine these Y values for us. So let's say we're interested in available nitrogen. We need, let's say, 50 or 100 different soil samples to have been processed using wet chemistry to produce 50 to 100 Y values. Now we need to take a portion of each of those samples from, let's say, a thing called a soil bank. So let's just suppose we've got a soil bank. We divide our soil sample into half we send half off to the wet chemistry lab to get the property determined and with the other half we put that through a near infrared device and that will produce the X values for our input. Now the near infrared device produces a signature if you like for the soil sample and I've got an example of one there below on the slide. So these values will form the input. In the sense of an R file they represent the values or reflectance values for a given wavelength band. So 
you'll see in the R file produced for the activity that that starts at around 350 nanometers, that's the first attribute. The next one might be 370 nanometers, 390 or 80, 90, 400, 410 and so on. So the number of attributes we have is, as you'll see in the example, is something like 200 um, for each of those spectral uh, wavelength bands and then the values are um, numeric values which which are the amplitudes if you like of the spectrum uh, but just the reflectance values that you get from the device. So as I said you need a few hundred samples so it's not cheap because you've got to send off whatever you number of samples you've got it's very cheap to get the X but it's expensive to get the Y because you've got to send those off for wet chemistry analysis. So to put together a decent training set is expensive. So given that why would you bother doing that for this particular, for, for the soil and this particular application. Well, once you've, let's say you've got your 50 to 100 samples and you've built your model, then if a farmer comes in with a new soil sample and says, I want to know what the available nitrogen is, we just get out our available nitrogen model that we've built and we get the NIR spectra for that new sample and then so that represents new x, if you like. We run it through the model, and it will produce an estimate of y for that soil signature. So we'll be able to tell the farmer, for your soil sample, the available nitrogen is 4.3, or whatever the, that, y, that estimate, estimated y value is. So instead of days for the wet chemistry to take place, we're talking about milliseconds for the NIR device to produce the signature for us to run through the model and get the estimate of y. So that's the first thing that makes it useful. It's very fast. Second thing that makes it useful is that we can produce for the same input if we've got enough models an estimate for a number of soil properties, not just one. So if we've got, for example, wet chemistry which has determined the potassium, the available nitrogen, the organic carbon, the organic nitrogen, and so on, then we can build models for each of those. And for the same x value, we can produce predictions for each of those soil properties. So we can tell the farmer with the soil sample in very short order, of the order of milliseconds, what the values are for each of those soil properties. All right, so that's the value of it. How do we actually go about doing the modeling? For well, the training set, remember, let's imagine it's an R file. The rightmost column, or the, the class column, would be a numeric set of numeric values. So we're talking about a regression problem. And then the attributes are all these reflectance values at various wavelengths. So they're all numeric values as well. So we've got x numeric values, and so is y. The classifiers of interest are things such as linear regression, rep tree, the model tree, M5 prime, random forest, support vector machine regression, Gaussian processes, and so on. So what I've done there is lined up the algorithms in terms of really their processing speed. What you'll do in the activity is you'll process the data using the first four because you'll see that it's quite a large data set and the other two uh, take too long really to be useful in the activity. But we'll be saying more about that later. The big thing message though of the activity is that pre-processing can make a big difference to a classifier's performance. So what the activity will basically take you through is establishing a benchmark just using the classifiers on a on raw data and then using various pre-processing techniques and seeing whether or not the classifiers improve on the data sets produced after pre-processing. So in, typically for near-infrared data, the kinds of things you can do to pre-process it are to downsample the data, to remove baseline effects, and to smooth the spectrum. And you'll be doing all three of those and combinations of those three in the activity. So the reason I mentioned the slower classifiers, such as support vector machines and Gaussian processes is that the activity involves processing 4,000 soil samples, oh, roughly 4,000 anyway, 
Uh, um, what you'll be doing is looking to see if you can develop a model for organic carbon. That will be the Y value. But as I said previously, organic nitrogen is also in the data set. So if you want to run the activity completely again using organic nitrogen instead of organic carbon, then you're welcome to. So what you'll do is you'll process the data raw and then you'll see what happens to the results when you start applying the pre-processing techniques. And the classifiers respond in different ways to the different pre-processing techniques. Some get better, some get worse, some stay the same. But you'll see all those effects through the activity. One thing that's worth bearing in mind is that you're about to enter experimental machine learning where you're going to have a lots of results because the activity takes you through the first four classifiers on the previous slide but all in default mode. Now each of them has parameters that can be tweaked and so can each form the basis for a separate experiment and you'll be using four pre-processing methods one of which is to do nothing just use the raw spectra. Now some of those methods themselves have parameters as well and of course you can combine the pre-processing methods as well. So the space of experiments is extremely large and from all of that you'll be able to produce some pretty good results. Now what you'll be looking at is particularly the correlation coefficient. So how well does the predicted value match the um, known value from the training data using cross-validation. So that will give you some idea of how close you are. And what you want, of course, is to produce models that get you close to 1.0, a perfect correlation with what you've seen in training data previously. Now, you'll see that that's not possible because there's too much error in the data, typically. But it will be a starting point. But you'll mainly see the improvement you can get from that base baseline or benchmarking that you do with the raw data to what happens when you apply various pre-processing techniques. So I hope you enjoy that and I hope it whets your appetite for machine learning application development.